excited to join us this morning? Come on, do you believe that we serve a risen King this morning? And He is living and through Him, through Jesus, we can also have that resurrection power. Is that something to celebrate this morning? Come on, I just encourage you during this time, if there's any dead parts in your life, let's just give them all to Jesus this morning and let's give Him praise for what He's going to do.
Come on, you all excited to be in church this morning? So amazing. Hey, um, I, this wasn't originally planned for us to do something right here in this part of the service, but we're about to sing about how God is more than able. How many of y'all believe that? He's more than able. So we thought it'd be cool to just kind of share a story with you that proves it. And so I'm going to ask my buddy Jordan to join me on the platform this morning. Come on, Jordan. Jordan Snellings, everybody. He's coming up on the stage right now. A few weeks ago, as we were wrapping up our series called We Believe, we ended with a message called We Believe That God Provides and That God Heals. And we created space at the end of that service for those of you who had a need needed a miracle in your life for God to respond to that. We talked about how God heals one of three ways, either miraculously or through medicine or through eternity. How many glad we get a perfectly whole healed body one day when we get to heaven? That's going to be awesome, right? So Jordan came forward that day and he said, I'm really scared because my dad deals with what? He's got really bad back pain in his lower back. In his lower back. And you were starting to have... I was having the uh, same exact feelings that he was having, the same sharp pains. Yeah, which was a problem because you, where you work, you've got to be able to lift things, you've got to be able to move things, heavy things, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. So we just took time on that Sunday morning and prayed. Uh, Jordan happened to just come to, come to me. I don't think it's had anything to do with me. In fact, usually my healing prayers don't do anything. So, um, but we just, man, I just, we just prayed down every part of his spine and we asked God to heal it, to take it away. And the next week you came up to me in the lobby and you said, I'm pain free. I'm sorry. You said what? Pain free. Pain free. All right. So that was seven days later, seven days later, man, I'm not good at math. That was seven days later, and your pastor's so full of faith, I said, let's wait one more week, and then we'll tell everybody if you're still, <laughs> if you're still good. And then last week, I kind of forgot, you had some stuff going on, so now it's three weeks. So Jordan, any pain three weeks later? None at all. You're able to work? You're able, I'm able to, to work, do everything I need to, to do. Come on, y'all. Let's give Jesus some praise this morning. Isn't that awesome? It's incredible. And I know some of y'all are skeptical, but I'm telling you, we, we didn't plan any of this. God is good. He's able to do, the Bible says, exceedingly more than we could ask or imagine. So um, I'm going to pray. While I pray, I'll let you sneak off of the platform and um, give, give Jordan some love. It takes guts to come up in front of your whole church. We, had, we've, we just decided over the past year that we've got to do a better job of telling stories when there's something worthy of celebrating. And we haven't figured out how to make it all slick and packaged and well-produced in a video or anything like that, but we want you to have the story. We want you to know what God is doing in your church family. And so as we get ready to sing about it, now let's really, now we got a reason to actually believe it. Why don't we just lift our hands to heaven? Heavenly Father, we're about to, we're about to worship you and talk about how you're more than able. You are able. So I pray, God, that it would, it would just hit different today, that it would, it would be more meaningful, that we would sing not not just words on a screen, but sing a song of faith. And God, I pray for every person in the room who has a need today, who needs a miracle, that we would sing from a place of faith, God, believing that you are more than able and that you're gonna meet us right where we're at. We thank you for it. We love you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship you guys. Why do I talk my 
say welcome. If you're in person or online, we're so glad that you've joined us this morning. My name is Kyle. I'm the small groups director. I want to take a moment and invite all the third through fifth graders to come on forward and follow this young gentleman right here. They've got their own program at Kids Life and they're going to be able to grow their faith. 
at that time while they're coming forward, I want to invite you to say hello to your neighbor, give them a high five, a handshake, a hello, a hug, and then turn your attention to church news. Good morning and welcome to True Life. Today's message will begin shortly, but first let's get caught up on what's happening in the life of our church. Step two of Life Track is happening tonight at 5 p.m. Life Track is all about helping you get connected to a spiritual family and find your fit in ministry. Tonight we will look at how God made each and every one of us with a unique design for a specific purpose. You will have the opportunity to take a personality and spiritual gifts assessment, which will help you discover your God-given calling and fit in ministry. Kids Life will be open. Hey teenagers, join us for Motion Night tonight at 6.30. Motion Night is a time that you can experience worship and a message for you to apply to your everyday life. After the service, the night will be topped off with activities and a chance to win great prizes. Spiritual growth happens in the context of relationships and your life could be changed for the better by building community within our church. You can now open the church app or go to truelife.church groups to check out what we have available for you this semester. Small groups will launch next week and we can't wait to join you in your spiritual journey. Serve Day is July 13th. In a few weeks, we'll be going out in our community and showing the love of Christ in real tangible ways. We'll be going to Brader Elementary School to do some various projects throughout the building to prepare for the next school year. Please register on the app or go to truelife.church slash serve day to join up to serve. Now that you are all caught up on church news, let's get ready for week four of our series, It's Just Money. All right, come on, y'all feeling good this morning? Good to be in church, good to be in God's house. Awesome, hey, if it's your first time here, my name is Michael, I'm the lead pastor, and I'm just so thrilled that you're here. And uh, on behalf of all of our staff, all of our team, my wife, all of us, we're just thrilled to have you here. Also wanna say hello to anyone joining us online this morning. Would y'all help me welcome first time guests and everybody watching online today, we're glad you're having church with us today. Hope you've encountered Jesus, and uh, wasn't that awesome hearing Jordan's story this morning? Wasn't that so powerful, yes? Yeah. Early service, you never know. All right. Uh, man, so, so excited to, to dive into our final week of It's Just Money and um, just going to challenge you a little bit around our mentality this morning uh, with, as it relates to our stuff, our finances, our material possessions and um, challenge you, send you away from this series with just a little bit of a challenge around our mentality and our generosity. Before I get into that, though, I do want to just reiterate a couple things you already saw in church news, and that is the summer groups kick off next weekend on Father's Day, June 16th. Father's Day, everybody, next week, just want to let you know. Just try, I'll try to give you a little reminder before the Mother's Day and the Father's Day in case you haven't thought about the, the people in your life and how you're going to love on them and honor them. And so Father's Day, Father's Day. I just, I would say on Father's Day, some people love Starbucks gift cards. I don't want to say who. But some people love that, and, uh, and um, some people love Home Depot gift cards on Father's Day. I don't know who, but you, you know the man and the men in your life, and so maybe, maybe hook them up. Uh, and we'll have a little something special for you on your way out of here next weekend as well. Also, um, Serve Day, you saw it there, is, is one of the most important days I think we have together as a church, because it's one of the opportunities we have to all come together and just, and just do some hands and feet of Jesus-style work, no strings attached for people in our community. And, and as you saw in church news this year, we're adopting Brader Elementary School. All of our projects will happen 
at Brader, and um, they're going to quickly kind of just scroll through some of the pictures. They did a whole, our team went over and did a whole walkthrough, um, I think about a week ago, a little over a week ago, uh, some of the areas that are just in need of some help and some repair. And so uh, there are walls that need to be repaired and painted. There's exterior paint. There's, uh, that's supposed to be a bench. And uh, come on, we just want those kids to go to school in an environment that they feel good about, that feels clean and safe and excellent. Come on, everybody. And... Um, and so here's what I love about Serve Day this year. There's options for everyone, okay? So uh, if you can handle getting outside and, and the heat and all of that, there's projects for you. If you'd rather be in the air conditioning, there's projects for you. If you just want to help make sure our team is fed and well cared for and maybe your mobility is limited but you want to participate out somehow, we've got a way for you to help. And so head over to uh, truelife.church forward slash Serve Day. Um, I think... Uh, talking to our outreach directors, we're going to need well over 100 volunteers that day to get this thing done. And we need some of you to be willing to coordinate huddles, groups of people uh, to oversee particular projects and make sure it gets done uh, with excellence. And so uh, get over there and sign up today if you would. I think they told me about 25 of you signed up after we pitched this last weekend. Uh, but we want to we, wanna, we need another 25 this week and another 25 the next week, and, and really we need the whole church to participate. So uh, head over and sign up if you're able to be around that weekend. Um, and then one more reminder, Encounter Week, I'm running out of chances to talk to you about this before I do a little bit of summer travel myself. Encounter Week will be August 4th at 6 p.m. and August 5th to 7th, that first one is a Sunday, and August 5th to 7th at 7 p.m. Uh, as we get ready for the back to school season, I know kids aren't even out of school yet, but I just want this on your calendar as we get ready for the back to school season in August, we're gonna take a few days and just lean into the presence of God together and have uh, some time here in the church and just do church every day. Just old school revival. How many of y'all were around for some of those back in the day? All right, old school revival and, um, and it's gonna be great. The only difference between this and the old school revivals is we're not bringing in somebody from, uh, from out of town that you gotta give a love offering to every night. We're just gonna, uh, the star of this show is Jesus, everybody. And so he's gonna be in the house and, and it's gonna be awesome. And then I just wanna remind parents, you are running out of time to get your kids signed up for Motion Conference July 24th to 29th. And um, every teenager needs to go. Every student needs to be there. And tonight is Motion Night with a special sneak preview for students who are graduating out of fifth grade and into middle school. So if you've got a fifth grader, get them here tonight at 6.30 p.m. Uh, I, I'm actually gonna be here tonight uh, speaking to the students and, and speaking into their lives uh, a little bit and I cannot wait. I think my wife's gonna be there leading worship. Like we're, it's, it's a Smith family affair tonight. And, uh, but every single student needs to be at Motion Night tonight. Get them here. Uh, if you've got friends and family and you know their kids just need to be in church, like you call them, bribe them, give them money, give them ice cream, get them to church. It's going to be a powerful night, and they're going to meet with Jesus, and uh, their lives are going to be transformed, and I cannot wait. Amen, everybody? Okay, um, and apologies up front if I just don't sound great. I'm having like the battle of my life with allergies this year. Every once in a while, I just have a bad year. Anybody else getting your tail whooped this year? Come on, let's just have a moment and grieve together. And... Um, Lord, just let us breathe today. In Jesus, that's all we want. We just want to breathe through here, not here. All right, so, um, all right. I know anytime we talk about money and we're wrapping up this It's Just Money series today, um, it can feel really personal. Uh, it can even be a heavy topic because some of us are really struggling with money. And so, before I get into the content this morning, I just wanted us to have a little bit of a lighthearted moment. We haven't, haven't done that a lot here lately anyway. And... Um, I was just curious, have any of y'all been experimenting? You know, the, the rise of artificial intelligence is upon us. Yes? Have any of y'all experimented with it yet? Yeah. Um, so I was, just, I was just having some fun with ChatGPT. Have y'all have done this? Like last night, my son and I sat at my laptop for a few minutes and laughed our heads off. Uh, we told... I don't know if this is too crude to share on a Sunday morning. We told ChatGPT to write a rap song about me giving random advice about going to the bathroom to my son, Benjamin. And it did. Like, it's just like, that's because that's, that's 11-year-old humor. And we just, we had a great time laughing. It, I can't believe it actually did it. It did it. And it all rhymed. And 
we put a beat to it and we sang it to ourselves on the couch. Yes, we are those people. All right, so, uh, so I've just been, like, been having fun. In fact, for this series, we've got that great graphic up there on the screen, but before we chose that graphic, we were trying to figure out what, what to do, and I thought, you know what? Chat GPT is making images now. Do you all know that? Like it can just randomly generate stuff. And so I went to, I went to Chat GPT and I gave it this prompt. I said, create a graphic that can be used as a church logo for a teaching series entitled It's Just Money. The graphic should be light, fun, and energetic and communicate that we don't need to be afraid of talking about money in church. And Chat GPT came up with this. That's a dude with a briefcase running away from the church with dollar bills flying everywhere. I thought, well, that is how a lot of people feel, and there's pumpkins, so apparently, I don't, like, I don't know. There's a lot here. There's a lot happening here. Its second option that it gave us was this one, and so apparently here, Jesus has a magic pot of money, and he's just making it rain. J Jesus just sitting there, which is not theologically accurate at all. Come on, that's funny. I don't care what you say. That's funny. Right? I also, y'all remember when Google first exploded and we would do Google vanity searches? Remember you'd put your name in just and see if Google could find you and what it had to say about you? Did anybody else do? remember when this was a big deal? You would just type your name into Google and see what, see what pops up. Um, so I wanted to see, can we do that with ChatGPT? And so I gave it this prompt. I said, <laughs> create a picture of me. Michael Smith, preaching to True Life Church in Newark, Delaware. And it got close. It's pretty close. I said, okay, let's get a little more detailed. Include my wife and family on the front row, listening intently. And apparently we have adopted, because <laughs> that's us now. And also we can't spell, because it's church with two C's, C-H-U-R-C-C. -C. Good job, Chad. AI's killing it. It's killing it. Come on. I mean, it's, we're not, it hasn't become self-aware yet. Skynet is not on the rise. Some of you are too young to know what in the world I'm talking about. Terminator, you should, you should all know. You should all know, okay. Uh, man, come on, isn't that funny? That's funny. Y'all need, need to go try this now. You need to go put in some stuff and, and see, what, see what ChatGPT thinks you look like. I just thought like maybe it would scour the internet for all the images that are out there from our church and it would reason and figure things out, but I think it just went off the weird spelling of my name and made some assumptions, which is um, not cool, ChatGPT, not cool in 2024 to make those kinds of assumptions. All right, uh, uh, quick refresh where we've been over the last several weeks. Um, we've been talking about how we, how we steward, how we handle money. Uh, a question a, a lot of people have is like, hey man, or maybe you don't, but I, I just, I, I think sometimes people think this, like why, why is my church spending four weeks talking about money and possessions, like, I, this isn't the necessarily the thing I'm most excited to come to church and hear about, and I understand that, um, but here's the deal. Most of our society has an unhealthy view and unhealthy systems of money and stewardship. And if, if I'm gonna pastor you well, if our team is gonna lead you well, then we really should follow the examples of Scripture we should use the Bible. Y'all, come on. Do you want, you want to go to a church that uses the Bible, I would assume? Yes, okay. Uh, and so, just, just a quick recap, quick refresh, just want to remind you that, that we actually have to spend some time talking about this kind of stuff. Jesus did it in 16 of his 38 parables. Jesus used these parables, these stories to illustrate things, 16 of the 38 focused on money or possessions. Um, 
I think this is kind of funny. I don't know like if this is, if God did this on purpose, probably did. Um, Because a few weeks ago, we talked about the tithe, a tenth, one tenth. We return one tenth to the Lord. Did you know that one in ten verses in the New Testament focuses on money or possessions? So a tenth of your New Testament talks about how to steward, how to handle stuff. There are 500 scriptures in your Bible on prayer, 500 on faith. There are over 2,000 verses on money and possessions. Over 2,000. And... Jesus taught, and we talked about this last week, that the greatest competition to God is money and possessions. It is the thing that's going to compete for your heart more than anything else. You'll have seasons where other things compete more. Maybe you're looking for a romantic relationship or, or, or some other form of gratification. But Jesus teaches the thing that is going to compete for the hearts of humanity more than anything else is money and and stuff. How many of y'all know that's true? It's true. It's just true. And that's why we, ta- we shared last week that no one can serve two masters, for you'll hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And then Paul reaffirms this when he's talking to Timothy. He says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, and how many think we might be living there? In the last days, there will be very difficult times. For people will what? They're going to love only themselves and their stuff. They'll be boastful and what? In fact, they'll even name a whole month after it. Scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe we kind of live in a day and age where you could, you might argue that some of that's, that's happening. Would you all agree? And so, of course, we don't want that to be true of us, of God's people. Not that we're better than anybody else. That's not what we're trying to establish here. But we do want to be more obedient. We want to get it right. We want to do it God's way. And so you've got, you've got a couple choices when it comes to this whole money, possessions, stewardship conversation. And I kind of think of it like, like sometimes coming to church, sometimes reading the Bible, sometimes listening to the Holy Spirit can be a lot like going to the doctor. And anybody ever gone to the doctor and got blood work and then your doctor calls you back and they're like, hey, couple things. Couple things we want to be careful of here. So, so, we want to watch this, uh, this A1C level. It's a little on the high side. We, we want to, hey, your, your cholesterol ratio's not the best. Not, not the great. And so th- then, you have, then you have some choices to make. When you, realize, when you recognize that everything's not as healthy as it could be, you have, you have a choice to make. You, can, you could bury your head in the sand. That's an option. You could pretend that it's not a thing, that's an option. Or you could lean in and get healthy. Come on, or you can lean in and get healthy. And if you wanna lean in and get healthy, you're probably gonna need somebody else's help. Like you might need somebody to help you figure out how to make some changes to your diet. You might need to add some things, you might need to take some things out. In In a worst case scenario, Maybe there's, some, maybe there's some medicine that might need to be introduced. I'm not a big fan of doing that until it's an absolute last resort, but it might, it might need to happen. Remember, it might need to be some supplements that we introduce. It might need to add some exercise. There might be some things that we need to change. And listen, our, our, our finances, our stewardship, how we handle money and stuff is really much the same way. All this series has been about is trying to help us identify, are my, are my metrics maybe a little bit off? Is the condition of my heart maybe suffering a little bit because of the systems that I've allowed to be developed in my life. And so what I would love as we end this series today is if we could as a church together just make a commitment today. Not not that we're going to always get it right, not that we're always going to be perfect, not that we're going to always nail every budget category, because you're going to mess up. Can I hear an amen, somebody? You're going to make a mistake. 
But what I would love is if we could all together as a spiritual family this morning make a decision, make a commitment that I will develop a stewardship mentality. Like I, the one thing I am going to do is I'm going to keep working on it. And I'm going to keep working on it. And I'm going to keep working on it. And I'm going to keep working on it. Until Jesus comes and takes me home, I'm going to keep working on it. If you're all in on that, would you just make this statement with me this morning? Can we make this declaration together as a church? Come on. I will develop a stewardship mentality. Or uh, my wife and I grew up in a system that we called it a kingdom mentality, that we really want to see everything through the lens of God's kingdom. And if we're going to do that, if we're going to have a stewardship mentality, then it means our relationship with money. And our relationship with possessions might have to change. Our mentality might have to shift from our current way of thinking to something new. And most people in our current form of society use this mentality. They say, this is option number one, you, you could say, everything I have, I own. It's mine. I made it, I earned it, I control it. I built this business, I built this career, I built this nest egg, it's mine. That could be the mentality that you have. But I would like to remind you that as far back as Deuteronomy, as God was forming his people and trying to give them his mindset, he had this to say. He did this, he did all of this so you would never, everybody say never, never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. Come on, everybody say the next four words. He is the, he is the one who gives you power to be what? in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. I don't own anything. This is actually why a lot of believers, a lot of Christians, and I'm gonna prove it to you in a second, like four weeks ago when I talked about the tithe and returning a tenth to the Lord, some of you just checked out. You're like, not doing it, bro, no. This is, why, this is why a lot of Christians aren't tithers. This is why a lot of believers aren't as generous as they could be, not even in the church, but outside of the church, because we have this ownership mentality. It's mine. In fact, we're not tithers, we're tippers. Oh, can I mess with you this morning? And so what we do is we'll, like, we'll come to church and we'll like, be like, mm, you know what? Worship was on today. I got goosebumps. I really like that, that healing story. That was good. Pastor is okay. Uh, got a couple good one-liners out of there. And um, really made me feel like I'm, you know what, I'm pretty much right and everybody else in my world is wrong. I feel, I feel, good, about, I feel good about Sunday. I'm going to tip a little extra. I'm going to give a little extra. We're tippers. In fact, the statistics... And y'all are above these, y'all would do better than these statistics. But in America, the national average is that between 3 and 5% of church attendees tithe. That's all. 3 to 5% of people who attend a church are tithers. Now, y'all are, y'all are beating these numbers. And so just, can we just give Jesus a hand because you're beating those numbers? But in most churches in America, 95 to 97% of the people in the room are freeloading off of everybody else. That's just the truth. And 33 to 50%, only 33 to 50% of church attenders in America give more than zero. So they're not tithing, they're not bringing a tenth, but they're doing something. But only 33 to 50% do something, which means 50 to 67% give zero, like nothing. Did you know in America today, per capita, only two, four, two and a half percent of American wealth is spent 
on generosity. That's just frightening to me. That in what has traditionally been the wealthiest nation on planet Earth, and I know there's some competition for that title now, but maybe this is part of the reason why, that only 2.5% of our wealth is spent on generosity. And I've made this statement to you before, about a year, a little less than a year ago, actually. In America, Christians, believers, will spend more on weight loss and pet care than they will give to God. Why? Because we're in the I own it mentality. We're in the it's mine mentality. And so if we want God's blessing on our stuff, how many of y'all want God to bless your finances and your stuff? I do. If we want to live under the umbrella of his blessing, then we've got to get out of the ownership mentality and we've got to shift to this mentality that everything I have, who owns it? God owns it. I'm just the steward. He's just, he's allowed me the opportunity to steward this for a season. And if we would grab onto this mentality, y'all, we could literally transform the world. Somebody say amen. Let me prove it to you. If every Christian in America would tithe, I'm sorry, globally, if every Christian in the world would tithe, we would raise $165 billion per year. If every believer tithed, the church globally would have $165 billion to work with. And uh, I actually just had a board meeting this past week. I had to get our budget approved for the new fiscal year beginning July 1st. And so I was in this mode anyway. And so I thought, if I had to go in front of the board and tell them, what are we going to do with the $165 billion? You, like, you better have a plan. You better have a plan. Watch this. You know what the church globally could do with $165 billion? $20 billion over five years would eliminate global starvation. Gone. 15 billion over five years would supply education to every child on the planet. Are y'all seeing it yet? Another 15 billion over five years would give clean water and sanitation to the 1.2 billion people who don't have it yet. 20 billion dollars over five years would eliminate slavery globally. No form of it would exist on planet Earth anymore. How many of y'all think that's a worthy cause? And watch this, it would only take $1 billion to make sure that the message of Jesus Christ, that the gospel message reaches every set of ears on planet Earth. That's a total of $71 billion per year. That means we would be living in surplus. Every church would be the most beautiful church that you've ever seen. There would never be a lack. There would never be a need. There would never be a time that we have to say no to helping someone. There would never be a time that we can't, that we can't meet the needs of our community. Every day could be serve day. If we could just get everybody to do it. What would our, can I just say this since we're in an election year? What would our elected officials do if the church would just be the church and they couldn't position themselves as savior anymore. Just let that sit in your heart for a minute. We're all amped up thinking that, that, that the next election is the thing that will change the world. No, 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 you and I can change the world. We can do it if we would just respond with a stewardship mentality. How many of y'all think that's a good version of planet Earth to live on, everybody? Wouldn't that be fun? That'd just be so much fun. And we got surplus, we can account for inflation. We're ready, we're, we're ready for it. And so I just, want, I just wanted to, I thought this would be a good opportunity as we close the series too, just to kind of share with you like what we're trying, what we're trying to do as your church because we're at the end of June, we will end a fiscal year. July 1st is the beginning of the fiscal year for our church. And so we've just kind of gone through the process here in the last 30 days, 45 days of, of, 
establishing that budget for the new fiscal year and making sure everything's in place and aligned. And, and so I just want you to know one of the systems that we adopt as a church is the idea that we tithe on the tithe. So I'm not just preaching this idea to you. I don't just, I don't just want you to return a tenth. We've built it into the systems of the church. This, how many like it better when people practice what they preach? How many think the world's a better place if we practice what we preach? And so I, I just want you to know, when you give today, if you return your tenth, you'll mark that as tithe general fund. And maybe God puts it in your heart to go above and beyond. You might say, you know what, I also want to give a little bit to missions. I want to, I want to help our missions partners. So what we'll do is we'll take one-tenth of everything that you guys give to the general fund, and we will add to that everything that you give to missions and outreach. And then we'll take that dollar amount and we'll give it away. It will leave the building. It will go to reach people and meet needs. It will go to projects like Brader on Serve Day. And can I just share something fun with you guys? That number, what's proje- that, what we're projecting that number to be in the new fiscal year beginning July 1st is $97,000 that will come into this place and leave and go serve somebody somewhere else. Come on. How many of y'all know? That's, that's pretty awesome. That's amazing. And there's a few special projects we carved some of that out for, and then we went to our missions team, our, our outreach team, and we said, here's the, here's the bucket you guys tell us what it's going to take to, to, to do the projects that you want to do. We were able to say to Pastor Perry and that team this year, we kind of shifted our model a little bit. And we said, like, we want you guys to go vet things and tell us what you're passionate about in our community and make sure that these organizations are getting our church the best return on dollar that we can possibly get. So, so I, I kind of like to think of it like we're, the, we're the, the brokers. The church is the brokers for your spiritual dollar. Like, I want to I wanna find the ways to take your dollar and go get as many souls to heaven with it as I possibly can. Yeah? So we look for that. We, like our, we look for organizations that aren't spending all their money on overhead, but are actually making a difference with, with the dollars that we give them. I thought it'd be fun to share some, um, some, some of the data with you that we were looking at to make some of our decisions. We, our fiscal year ends in June, but... Uh, the data that I have available right now is through the end of April. So through the end of April, our forecasted revenue as a church was $545,000. Pretty good for a church our size. We, like, we could do better, but it's pretty good. We thought that's how much that our church would give uh, for fiscal year 23. But y'all actually beat it by a little bit, and you gave $558,828. Come on, that's pretty awesome, right? Um, full transparency, coming out of COVID 2021, 2022, we went through a little bit of a crunch cash flow wise as a church. And so we had to make some decisions. We had to decide like, what are we going to do? And I think God honored us for being willing to make tough decisions. And so we looked for places to cut and places to be careful. And, and so the, the other cool thing about this is, is we, we took a little over a year ago, I think about a year and a half ago. We took $50,000 out of our church's long-term savings and we moved it into our operational account because we were just like, we wanted to make sure that we were going to be okay, especially through us, the summer season because summer is typically where churches see a dip because people are out doing things. But we were able to, through April, stay at only 92.2% of our budget so you combine the fact that we've stayed under budget with the fact that you guys went over project, projection and we were able to take $45,000 this past week or two weeks ago and move it back into long-term savings so that we can continue to build for the future, think about what's coming ahead. I know some of you are like, I don't, I don't care, Pastor. Is there still free coffee? Yes. Yeah, yes, there's still free coffee. But I'm, more than ever, I'm thinking about what happens after us? How do we, how do we make sure that we hand the church over to another generation and, it's, and we've set them up to win. Come on, y'all with me? I just find myself thinking more and more about that. So our, our 2023 expenses, fiscal year expenses were only $516.284. And so you could see the margin that we were able to establish there and rebuild some of that margin and put some things back in savings and think about the future. And 
tell some of our teams this, this fiscal year in July, they haven't all seen the numbers yet, but some of their categories, we're going to increase the spend so that they can have better curriculums and better options to serve the people that they're serving and um, more free coffee. Come on. Can I hear an amen, everybody? All right. So in, in week one, I said this to you. The gospel is free. How many glad Jesus did it all? But delivery is not. Having a church, a moment like this, which I, I'm always blown away. Last weekend, we talk about money and people get saved. It's like they have this like, oh, God cares about that? I didn't know. That's awesome. I want him in my life. It's, it's amazing. But there's a cost associated with all of that. So my question for you today is, what if, everybody say what if. What if there's a blessing? Waiting for us on the other side of generosity. You know God modeled it. The most well-known scripture in all of humanity, for this is how God loved the world, he, what, gave. How many know God was generous? So that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Which means, I am never more like God than when I give. And isn't that the end game? Aren't we all trying to just become more like Jesus? I can, this isn't a fundraiser. I don't have some need that I'm trying to get you guys to, to help us meet. This is, this is about, this is about you. Like this is the, what life do you want to have? And if in any way you feel manipulated or pushed into anything, I don't want you to do anything. But I'd like to close our series with a challenge. What would it look like for you to take the next 90 days? The next 90 days, and every day, begin the day by saying to the Lord, God, nothing I have is mine. All of it is yours. Help me to steward it in a way that pleases you. Just every day, for the next 90 days. Nothing is mine. Everything is yours. Help me to steward it in a way that pleases you. If we could just shift our mentality. And then add to that prayer, God, teach me how to put these systems in place. We have, we have a way to help you. It's our financial peace small group. It launches next Monday, a week from tomorrow. You should sign up. It'll teach you how to steward. It'll, it'll teach you how to stack your priorities as it relates to finances. If, if you're not a tither, I dare you. Take the next 90 days and try it. See what happens when you put God first in every area of your life. And if you don't call True Life home, you're here visiting this weekend, go home to your home church and try it. Trust me. Because if we all would get on board, we literally, I showed you the numbers, we could literally change the world. And we could start right here. We could literally transform Newcastle County and we could transform Cecil County to, for the glory of God. Come on, y'all with me this morning? For the glory of God. In Matthew chapter 25, one of those parables, Jesus tells the story of a, a master. Who brings a few, a few guys together and he says, I'm, I'm going to go away, I'm going to be traveling. And I'm going to give each of you some of my resources, some of my stuff. 
and I would like, I would like for you to take care of it for me. He doesn't give him a ton of instruction. He says, I want you to take care of this for me. But the catch is, I'm coming back. And you're going to have to give an account of what you did. You know the story. To one he gives five, to one he gives three, to one he gives one. The guy with five invests it and doubles it. The guy with three invests it, doubles it. But the guy with one freaks out, buries it in the ground. And the master comes back and he's so excited. He rewards the stewards. But to the one who lived in fear, he says, man, you blew it. I gave you this opportunity to steward but you didn't have a stewardship mentality, you had an ownership mentality, and so you were afraid of losing what you had. I believe God wants us to be stewards. And how many know that when we're good stewards, He will come back and bless even more? Come on, y'all. Even more than what we could have ever imagined. So it's my challenge to you as we close this series. Shift to stewardship. Be ready for the master when he comes. Because he is coming. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me this morning? For the last time in this series, I'll make this statement. Jesus cannot be Lord of your stuff cannot be Lord of your money and your finances until he's Lord of your life. He needs your heart first. And if you're sitting in this room today and Jesus is not Lord of your life, or if you're watching online or listening to the recording of this message later on, and he is not the Lord of your life, I want to give you an invitation today to change that. Bible says today is the day of salvation. Why would you wait another moment? Why would you wait another second to surrender your life to him? He gave. He gave it all so that eternity could be your home. So there he had bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I won't call you to the front. I won't embarrass you. I won't, not, nothing like that. just want to know if you're in the room. If you say, hey, Pastor Michael, I need, I need to make Jesus Lord of my life today. Would you just Real quick, you just wave a hand at me. Just want to know if you're in the room. Just say, hey, that's me. I need to make Jesus Lord of my life. Anybody? I see it. I see it. Good job, guys. Anybody else? I need to make Jesus Lord of my life. I see it. Awesome. So if you raised your hand, or if you're watching online, then you would have had your hand up if you were here. I just want to help you with what comes next. You just need to pray. Just talk to the Lord. Just say, dear Jesus, today I give my life to you. I surrender. It's all yours. I believe you gave. You died. So that my sins could be clean. So that my heart could be purified. So that I could step into a relationship with you. Three days later, you rose from the dead. You broke the curse of sin off of my life. So from this day on, my heart, my mind, my body, everything I am and everything I have, it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate as heaven gets a little bit bigger this morning? Isn't that awesome? So amazing. Stand to your feet with me if you would. Kyle's going to come transition us out in just a moment, but listen to me. He'll give you some more instruction on this. We wanted to end the series with a moment for you, because I know some of you are going through some hardship. And you really, you want to get it right. You want to be a steward, but you're in, t- you're in a tough spot. Housing is a problem for a lot of people right now. Maybe your income hasn't kept up with inflation. Maybe debt has gotten out of control and you just feel suffocated and trapped. 
So in a moment, our prayer team will be at the front of the room. And as we, as we leave today, if you just, you need God to step in and help you find your way out, or you need him to do a miracle in your life, maybe you've been stewarding to the best of your ability, but you just need a miracle. We want to come alongside you and agree with you in prayer. We want to meet you where you're at. Just ask the Lord to come in and do what only he can do. And so we'll end with a, a more of a worshipful moment today instead of the high energy and and that team will be available for you to pray with. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? And let me just, let me just ask if, if you would today, you say, hey, pastor, I accept the challenge. Next 90 days, I'm all in. I'm going to start every day by saying, God, it's not mine, it's yours. Show me what to do with it. And I'm going to prioritize generosity in my life. Would you just raise your hand if you say, I'm in. I'm taking the challenge. Let's go, let's change the world together. So Heavenly Father, you see our hands, you know our hearts. Now, Lord, teach us how to steward. Shift the mentality from ownership to stewardship. Show us opportunities, God, to align with you, to come alongside you and and to be generous. Show us, God, how to change the world, how to change our community, how to change Newark and Bear and Newcastle and Wilmington and Elkton and Northeast and Middletown, Newcastle County, Cecil County. God, it can can start here with your generous people. God, I thank you for this church that has, it beats almost every national statistic on generosity. But you want more for us. There's more for us, God. And I I pray for us, the leaders. I thank you for the board of trustees, God, who wise men, businessmen, financial elders. God, we thank you for their wisdom. I pray you would bless them and their families and that you would continue to help us make choices that will honor you, that will lead people to you, that will grow your kingdom and give honor and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus. And we thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Who was blessed by that message? Yes. Well, I want to uh, invite you, if you put your faith in Jesus this morning, there is a connection card in the seat in front of you, the pocket there in front of you. I want to invite you to fill that out, and that way we can follow up with you, encourage you, and walk you through your next steps. If you're a first-time guest, or if you have some prayer requests or praise, um, we'd love to hear from you. So again, encourage you to fill this out. Um, If you're online with us, there is a digital option to be able to fill that out. And so if you call True Life home, I also want to invite you to give with your tithes and offering, just like Pastor Michael talked about. Um, Again, there's an envelope in front of you that you can fill out, or there's a digital option through our app or online. There will be a link dropped. Um, And you can drop those connection cards and envelopes in the kiosk out in the lobby. Um, Life track, just as a small reminder, is step two tonight, and that will be at 5 p.m. I want to invite any of you guys who have been checking it out, kicking the tires, and are like, all right, I want to discover kind of my, my purpose and what I can do. I want to encourage you to come on out at 5 p.m. There will be child care provided. And again, another small little reminder that uh, Pastor Perry is going to be having the Africa mission trip that's coming up. If you want more info, go to the info desk to get that. And lastly here, small groups will be kicking off next week, you guys. I just know this as the small groups director, people are looking to be known. They want to belong and they want to have purpose. And guess what? Church is not just on Sunday. It's every day, you guys, right? Because you are the body. And there are so many great groups out there, anything from crafting to softball to financial to it doesn't matter if you're single or married, there's a place for you to connect. And so I want to encourage you, go onto our app or website, click on connection, click on small groups and find that group. There are also pieces of paper in the lobby that you can scan and get plugged in. All right, if you're not standing, go ahead and stand with us. And I want to invite the prayer team to go ahead and come on forward. And I'll close us out with a prayer of blessing. And our worship team will lead us in one more song. Jesus, Holy Spirit, uh, we just thank you and love you. God, I ask that um, you take this hope right now. 
and you just, we don't keep it here. We go out into this world and we share that with other people. God, I ask that you open up the hearts of people to be able to hear your good news. God, I ask that you uh, just bless people in their relationships, in their careers, in their finances, with their schoolwork. Lord, everywhere that they go, Lord, I want you to work in them to develop an endurance and a love and a passion that just comes from you. We pray this in your name. Amen.